Hi everyone, welcome to Type Talks. Today we have a live Q&A with the ISTJ personality. And so Mark, would you like to tell us a bit about you? Hey, I'm Mark, uh, ISTJ uh, from Brisbane, Australia, uh, engineer at work. Um, looking forward to it, should be good fun. Thanks Joyce for having me on. Cool, yeah, I'm excited to have you on too. And so how do you experience your dominant function, introverted sensing SI? Uh, so introverted sensing for me, a lot of the time it's it's the comparison between what's currently occurring compared to what has occurred. Um, so there is like a bit of post-processing to it and it's sort of about patterns and things like that. Um, also generally, I think also it sort of facilitates pretty good memory. It's just that capturing and storage of things that have occurred, quite sort of vivid detail memory as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's kind of looking to the past as a reference point to understand the the current information that you have. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. So it's almost like a reviewer of sorts, a reviewer a of little past. bit. Even Absolutely. if it's yeah, even if it's like instantaneously going through a past deck of memories, it's still like yeah. going and referring to that. Yeah. This is like super quick. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. It's it's you like I know pretty well immediately whether I've experienced something similar or not before. It's just it's just there. Yeah. Mm. So there's a compare and contrast element to SI where it's comparing and contrasting the information now to information that it's experienced before. Mm -hmm. And it can happen immediately or it can be like a movie type of going through the details of the, the past yeah. experience too. Depending generally, on generally my memory is like quite good about like experiences and interactions about, you know, what people have said or what people have done or just just when I, whenever I experience things, generally that sort of stays with me for a long period of time as well. Cool. Yeah. And how do you experience your auxiliary function extroverted thinking, TE? Uh, TE is my efficiency. It's my sort of go-to, sort of particularly at work. Um, it's sort of managing things. It's ordering. Um, yeah. I think it gives me that sort of sharp, punchy sort of side because generally that's sort of what people first see as well. I'm mm -hmm. not sure what, what do you sort of think, Joyce? <clears throat> Yeah, TE is getting things done efficiently and effectively and wanting to move things forward. So if you have a task, it's wanting to get that task to the end goal or get that task to completion or get the result yeah. from the task. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And if you're going to start something, generally it needs to have a finish as well. At least mm -hmm. for me anyway, yeah. I sort of don't like having too many, like trying to juggle too many things and sort of try and put things to bed mm -hmm. and working through. Mm. Yeah, TE is all about closing the loop, too. Yeah. Cool. And so, Mark, how do you experience your tertiary function, introverted feeling, FI? Yeah, not well. Um, yeah, um, FI is a funny one. It's, um, for me, sometimes I don't know if I like something or not until someone says or does something, and then it's very clear. Like, I immediately know whether or not I like it, but I may not know that until something's occurred to sort of trigger it, I suppose, but yeah, so um, still developing, still developing. <laughs> yeah, FI is the part of the ISTJ that likes to stay true to itself. So it's the part of you that has, when uh, something strikes you, you kind of know if you like or dislike it. Absolutely, yeah, it's pretty well immediate again. Yeah, it's, yeah, I sort of know. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's the part of the ISTJ who, knew, who knows who they are. <laughs> and so how is your experience with your aspirational function extroverted intuition any uh it has its moments like all um aspirational functions do um at its worst it can be um too many options you know what i mean it's just too many, too many things too many options what choice to make um at its best i think it provides me with um I suppose what I'd almost like call like eureka moments where things just sort of click and I go, Oh, I wonder where that's come from. And generally when I follow those things, it sort of leads to good, good outcomes as well. So, um, yeah, certainly got some good parts. It certainly, um, certainly sticks its head up though, uh, at the worst times too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For some ISTJs, it can show up as an uncomfortability with completely new things that don't have an exact reason for being there. So it's like, why are these new things being introduced and what is the reason behind this? So it, it can yeah. be uh, resisting the unknown until it proves itself to be uh, extra yeah. thinking useful or effective or 
in, in a way. Yeah, I can say that certainly. So like that sort of skepticism towards the new until it's sort of been proven. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. <clears throat> Yeah, there is a skeptical approach to SI DOMs, especially ISTJs, because it's come almost like if you introduce something new, but the SI uh, past experiences don't see a reason for incorporating that. So it's like, why is this being incorporated? There can be a skepticism to whether or not it'll be effective. Yeah. Cool. And so the first question is, Hi, Jason Mark. How was the profiling session? What was obvious and what was a bit difficult to nail town about Mark's type since SI is so diverse between its users? So Mark actually was, he was between two types. He was between INTJ and ISTJ, which mm -hmm. is, well, you, you were more on the ISTJ side. Um, mm -hmm. And that's the story that a lot of ISTJs have at the beginning of their journey. Like they consider INTJ as a choice alongside ISTJ. And yeah, Mark is was pretty easy to profile actually. And I, I think it's because he's very self-aware. And so people who generally know themselves really well, they can answer questions very clearly and it makes the job really easy actually. Yeah. So how about you, Mark? What was easier for you to nail down about being an ISTJ and what were like the harder parts to... Yeah, for, for me, Joyce, like to be quite honest, I was like after sort of understanding the eight functions a little bit better, I was pretty confident I was an ISTJ then. Um, but I certainly sort of reached out to yourself just to get that sort of validation that I was definitely on the right track with it. Um, sort of after reading, particularly around, um, for me, SI compared to NI, that was the big one. Like can't quite remember like practical typing quite a good website like i was looking at si there and i was like oh that's perfect that's me so yeah shout out to those guys because they're pretty cool yeah it's a great website <clears throat> yeah practical typing is one of the best Jungian cognitive function websites to learn about type without the stereotypes yeah yeah cool and so what stereotypes about the istj do you not identify with or relate to Hmm. So if the lighting looks a little weird today, all like the lights in my house kind of broke for some reason. And so I'm putting makeshift things around my house to keep the lights on right now. So don't, if you're wondering, don't listen, why, don't listen to her. She's telling you food. She's getting ready for Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is my, my wedding. Wait, what? <laughs> my Halloween. Wedding. <laughs> Wait, Halloween, Halloween lighting. I don't know. We're good friends, but we're not yet married. <laughs> <laughs> when your brain retrieves the wrong thing. Okay. The wedding, wow. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's I never feel, I feel I feel a little bit underdressed with this wedding, Joyce. <laughs> yeah, that's never going to happen with me. I'm forever alone. Um, uh, and so what stereotypes are your thoughts uh, on that? Let's say, let's, 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 do you not identify with or relate to? Hmm. Joyce, do you like want to start with just like what are the common stereotypes from your perspective for ISTJs? Sure. And I'll, I'll probably jump in and just sort of, yeah. ISTJ accountants, that they typically become accountants. Yeah, yeah. I can, I can see that definitely. Um, like I'm very meticulous with the completeness of facts and figures and things like that. So I can definitely see why that would potentially be like a good career for them. Mm -hmm. from that perspective like um everything gets measured all that sort of stuff you know financial year you need to report your books i could definitely see how that would sort of why they why they um go together potentially or why, why it's a stereotype absolutely yeah i have a friend in real life who's an istj and an accountant too so it happens yep, yep. but they're not all accountants so yeah how about routines? What is your relationship with routines? That's an ISTJ. Yes. Yeah, so, like routines to me, is just to make things easier. That's that's pretty well edited. Like if I can put something in a routine, it's basically putting it in an autopilot, so I can think more clearly about other things. So, um, I think the big one as well, like with routines, is like sometimes, at least for me, I might get stuck in a routine, and it may not be the best thing, but it's the most efficient thing. But then I can jump out of that routine should, um, should, should it be proven that there's a better way of doing it? You know what I mean? Once that's sort of been proven, like for me anyway, like I'm not stuck on that routine provided 
someone or something can trigger a better way of doing it. Cool. And what are some of your routines? What's an example of a routine that you have? Uh, I get up like during the week, I'll get up at 5am, go to the gym. Like that's, yeah, that's, that's definitely one of them. Um, mm -hmm. like breakfast, always have breakfast at the same time, things like that. Yeah. Not so much with lunch and dinner, but definitely with breakfast. Um, what other things? Uh, I'm just trying to think what else? I generally like to read before going to bed, things like that. Mm -hmm. trying, trying to think what else, but yeah, there, there are a couple anyway to give some idea, but yeah. Yeah, things to achieve homeostasis with. Now, sometimes I notice like some INTJs will have something similar to that because extroverted thinking likes efficiency and it likes doing things in, in the best way to do it. And so sometimes that can look like a routine, you know, like how mm. INTJs will always wear black. You could call that a routine. So mm. some, sometimes routines can come out of TE too, not just, not just SI. Uh, cool. And so I'm wondering, there's another stereotype of always following the rules. And when you're in a workplace, like ISTJs are known to be like stereotypically workaholics that, yeah. What are your thoughts? Um, so the workaholics, I can definitely relate to. Like I, I, I definitely think um, from my perspective, like my standard is always above whatever's required. Um, but that's just me. Like that's for me, I'm not satisfied until it's where I think it should be. So um, if that means doing a few extra hours or whatever else, I'm, I'm comfortable doing that from that perspective. Um, what was the first? That they the always that? follow the rules, that they're rule following. Oh, the rule following. Um, depends what the rule is and depends who sets it. So if I, don't, if I don't respect the person that sets it, I'll actively go out of my way not to follow it. Um, or if it's a silly rule, no, nah, not really. Um, but if it generally sort of makes sense, yeah, pretty happy to follow it for the most part, provided there's a bit of reason, a bit of logic to it. Mm, yeah. I'm also wondering what's your relationship with procedures and doing things in a sequential order or doing things step by step? Um, yeah, for sure. So I think like most things, but the way I sort of think about or, or, or do things is definitely procedural based. Um, I've generally like, particularly with things I've done before, like very much so very, um, like very, oh, like I've already, already know the path I need to take. Like I know that I need to do these half dozen steps to achieve whatever I need to do, whether that's a work thing or whether that's socially or whatever else. Like I just, you know, it's, it's like in my mind, it's very clear how to get to wherever I need to get to. But for a lot of other people, I've sort of definitely not the case. Like people can get a bit lost with some things. So um, yeah, if I've done it before, like, yeah, for sure. Procedures and things like that. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I'm wondering, what is your relationship with Excel spreadsheets? That's another stereotype too. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm probably, maybe, maybe I'm one of the few ISTJs that doesn't really jazz me up particularly, to be fair. Um, I'm pretty basic at Excel, do some minor sort of things. Um, I, uh, I actually work with a guy and I think he might be ISTJ or INTJ and he loves them. Like he's got like this master register that links to other sheets and it does this and it does that. And um, I think it's brilliant because he's done all this work and it's really, really good stuff, but I'm the beneficiary of it too. So um, yeah, but for me personally, yeah, don't really get my, um, don't, doesn't, doesn't really resonate as hard, the whole Excel thing. Yeah. Another stereotype of ISTJs is that they're boring. What are your thoughts on that? Um, I think that's probably, I would say, what most people see. I could definitely buy into that. But I would say to people, if you knew the ISTJ well, I think you'd be really quite surprised at what you'd get from them. Mm. Mm -hmm. I'd, say, I'd say that's that ISTJ mask for most of the world. <clears throat> Yeah, yeah. They have their funny side. Their funny side is really blunt, like saying things yeah. that are very true to true and realistic and blunt. And it's so funny because yeah. no one else would be that blunt. <laughs> yeah, they'll, they'll say things that other people aren't willing to say. Um, also very dry as well. So if you don't pick up on the, um, the sarcasm or anything like that, it just a lot of people miss it. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah. Another stereotype with um, ice teachers is that they're traditional. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I think that comes from the SI. That's that whole comparing to the past thing. Um, for me, like if I've had a pretty good experience, I don't think that's a silly thing to try and replicate it or try and replicate it again. Um, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. With SI, you'll sometimes see the element of recreating events. So it's if you've had a positive experience, if you if you liked your eggs cooked a certain way, it's like recreating that egg right the way that it was cooked, the ideal sensory way that you wanted it to be. And Joyce, I don't know what you think, but like, does that sort of feed into the whole TE efficiency? Like, if I follow these steps again, you know, I'll get this result, and this is a really good, you know, I'm really happy with that outcome. Yeah, it does. I think yeah, they sort of feed off each other a little bit. Mm. Uh huh. Yeah. And with some ISTJs, they'll be frustrated if that efficient outcome isn't reached. Uh, so let's say you were expecting something to be in your fridge and it's not, and now it affects your yeah. ability to routinize something. Yeah. It's like, ah, yeah. <laughs> frustration. Yeah. Cool. And another stereotype of ISTJs is um, not showing emotions. What is your relationship with that? Uh, generally true, uh, but again, I'd say um, similar to the one about being boring in that, I'd say the the people close to the ISG, ISTJ will see a different side compared to Joe Public, everyone else, yeah. Mm, that is true, yeah. So ISTJs appear very private on the surface, but when you get to know them, you, you, you really get to know them and they're they're different than that. Uh, yeah, for sure, yeah. I'd still say, like, I'm definitely private, but yeah. definitely share a lot more with people that I'm comfortable sharing with um, to open up, to show that vulnerability for me, at least, that takes a bit to do. So I don't sort of air everything out in front of everyone. Yeah. With some ice TJs, you'll see this formal flaunt front and you kind of have to, like, break through it to get to know mm -hmm. them more private side. And so Ron asks, what function in your stack is something you favor the most? I favor the most. Yeah, okay. Um, or well, isn't that wouldn't that just be more so your functions that are at the top of the stack? Wouldn't yeah, I mean the most because you use them the most. <laughs> yeah. Not sure. Mm -hmm. Um yeah. Which one's your favorite favorite child out of your first four functions? Uh, TE. Yeah. 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 When I, when I that? Can get in that T pardon? Oh, why is that? Uh, when I can get in that TE zone, just like things just go well. I don't know why. It's just yeah, things get done and things get yeah, things just go really well. It's sort of mm -hmm. you know, once I can get out of my head and more more the doing, yeah. Um I don't know, yeah. that's just, maybe that's just my experience of it. That's my SI experience of it, yeah. <laughs> that's great. What things can you do with your TE? Do you have examples of things that you've finished or tasks that you're embarking on that you'd like to share? Um, hmm. Not really. Can't really think of anything specific, to be fair. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Yeah. Oh, with the ISTJ stereotypes, there's also the stereotype of having good memory, too, that people assign to ISTJs. Yeah, I, I, for me, I definitely agree with that. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, like I, I, get, I used to get really surprised, and I used to think people were lying. Like, I'd have a conversation with them a period of time ago, and they just genuinely wouldn't remember it but I remember it and they're like, oh no, that didn't happen. Um, yeah, I, yeah, I'm pretty well settled on the fact that it's just people have forgotten as opposed to being deceitful or underhanded or whatever else of it. But yeah, so I definitely relate to that one. Cool, yeah. So that is definitely a trait that Mark has and a, a lot of ISTJs have, but not all ISTJs have good memory. Some of them have bad memory too. It depends on what they remember. So 
what what they take out of the memories that they remember if it's That's SI right. or not. So yeah. yeah, just because someone has bad memory doesn't mean they're not SI, but there are a lot of SI people who do have good memories. So yeah, there's fun food for fact. Well, well, what are your favorite functions going from like most favorite to least favorite? So you TE is your most favorite. What is your yeah, second yeah. most favorite? <laughs> um, probably SI, TE, SI, and then um why si are we so like are we talking about for me specifically or just functions in general that yeah my stack you yeah uh, for me specifically why do i um i don't know i just si has just been such a big part of my life it's just um that memory that yeah i think it, it it's a fairly definitive part of me so yeah that's probably why it's the second one in my mind um yeah and then probably fi than me in that order mm -hmm. yeah makes sense um what did you think about typology before you got into it what about now um oh uh, like i think i think i've had like the fairly classic sort of introduction to it all like most people seem to have sort of at least like done a bit of a test or dabbled in it at high school and it was purely the whole four letters not the eight functions thing um to me it seemed a bit wishy-washy and i wasn't super interested in it the reason why i sort of got into typology was more just to better understand myself and others and that's so far that's been a really positive thing for me too to try and yeah get that different perspective um so yeah yeah that's great yeah How did you get into typology? What aspects personally interest you about it? It makes you want to keep learning more. Yeah, so I think I've probably already touched upon that just then, but um, so yeah, sort of like everyone, you sort of start to Dr. Google everything, and YouTube and things like that, and come across mm -hmm. Joyce's content and, you know, practical typing and a few other websites and things like that. Uh, what interests me about it? For me, it's, yeah, just to better understand myself and others um so uh why do i want to keep learning it um for me it's just the practical application of it so if i can better communicate and work with other people i think that's a really positive thing so that's sort of why i'm why i'm interested in it mm -hmm. from that perspective yeah what has it helped you understand about yourself the most that you found the most helpful um, probably like the lower functions, like the whole FI, NE, just to better understand them and to better understand when like those um, warning signs, when they may be, you know, like in that sort of grip state or whatever else. So I think that's been a really positive thing. Um, I think it's also like just better understanding the functions is probably given myself, uh, like I'm probably a little bit more kinder to myself now that I'm you know, I've got this sort of framework that I sort of understand um, like trigger points and things like that for myself as well. Yeah. Makes sense. What are those trigger points? <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to answer anything you're not comfortable with. Oh, so. uh, well, you probably answer your own question by, by stating that at the end. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It, I can't really think of I'm sure you'd probably be able to think of examples now that we've sort of communicated a little bit, Joyce, but for me, it's a lot of the time it, it's hard to think of them prior to things happening. But as we were sort of discussing when we went through the functions, it's it's pretty obvious in my mind when, when something doesn't sit particularly well with me. Makes sense, makes sense, yeah. And so what are some ways you manage to use extroverted intuition? Um, I think for me, one thing I try and do, and easier said than done, there's dad, hi dad. Um, uh, the big one for me is just trying, the word being trying, trying to be a bit open to new experience, um, and just being open to different ways about doing things while still trying to get to the same outcome. 
I think, yeah. So just, yeah, I think I think the start has been, yeah, at least at least trying to understand and take on new experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In what ways have you been trying to do that in your life? Um, so for me, like, whether it's a work or personal um, setting, that's just like, if, if I don't fully understand, like, the logic that someone's got to, for me, like, that, that could be as simple as, like, asking the question, just, you know, why, you know, can you explain that a little bit more? Why? How? How did you get to that? So those sort of questions being being a little like being trying to be open um to understanding other people's perspectives mm, that's awesome yeah mm. and so are you looking for other supplemental personality systems like the enneagram and instinctual variants do you know yours um so at my old workplace we did like an enneagram course um, they ended up saying I was a type nine. Um, I don't know, Joyce, would you tend to agree with that or not? Not really. I'm not really across the Enneagram particularly well, but they sort of said nine. Mm. Yeah, that's possible. The most common Enneagram types for ISTJs are the one, nine, five, and six. Mm. You can be other types as well. I just see those reoccurring the most often. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, they sort of um, it was a bit of a course, like it was a like a day workshop thing on it. They had like different um, they had like different picture cards and like what the you know like which ones sort of best represent you, and they sort of did like a bit of an interview and they, yeah, it was a bit of a process. So I'm not sure. I, I know a little bit. I know a reasonable amount about the Enneagram, but um, yeah, not. Type nine, maybe. <laughs> I can bring you through that one day, Mark, and figure that out for you. I'm yeah. I'm getting certified in two branches of the Enneagram. So with oh, which Chestnut. Um, so with her in the 27 subtypes. Yeah, Beatrice and okay. Uranho. And I'm also getting certified by the tri-type people too, Catherine from oh, cool. cool. Oh, we'll have to do that. Watch the session. That'd be cool. Yeah, yeah, we can figure that out together. And so I'm looking for more questions. What helped you identify as a Jungian sensing dominant type? We'll start with the first part. What helped you identify as a Jungian sensing dominant type? I don't know. Yeah. Um, I to be to be honest, I haven't read. Jung's work on it so like I know a lot of this stuff is based on that um but for me it was just barely as I was sort of saying like learning about the eight functions on different um you know the websites and YouTube and things like that it, that was just became fairly apparent to me that that was you know a function that I had mm. yeah there is an archival quality to SI, as in like it stores experiences. And so it, I don't know, this is a really horrible example, but cool element to SI. And so I'm wondering, Mark, how would you describe your attention to detail? I'm curious. <laughs> yeah, really high. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, really high attention to detail. Um, I don't know, like, I, I think um, generally, like, looking at, like, engineering reports and things like that, I normally pick up things that other people didn't even come close to sort of picking up. So, yeah, really high attention to detail. Cool. And so how was learning about other people who have different preferences from you? Um, yeah, it's, yeah, it's good. Um, like, even before knowing about type, I'm pretty sure I knew that um, different people had different personalities. Um, that was pretty apparent to me. So, yeah, um, it's, um, yeah, I suppose, like, for you and I, Joyce, like, we're completely, our functions are completely polar opposite, aren't they? Like, and they're mm -hmm. turned upside down. Like, we're mind introverted, yours are extroverted, aren't they? Yeah, uh-huh, it is. So they talk about, like, some websites talk about, like, the superego, isn't it? 
like the ISTJ is the super ego to the INFJ and vice versa. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. ISTJs are, are good as friends because they're blunt and they tell you the straightforward truth. <laughs> um, yeah. And so well, do you as an SI leave have moments of nostalgia or revisiting old experiences, rewatching a favorite TV series, visiting an old hometown? Um, yeah, for me, like, I certainly, like, you know, mentally in my brain, I'm certainly revisiting things. That's so just sort of a part of SI, but mm, don't really, like those examples there, I don't really gel with particularly well, but that may just be me as opposed to ISTJs in general. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> makes sense, makes sense. What types of old memories do you revisit? Like uh, if you do? It would depend on how I'm feeling at the time. So generally, yeah. like if I'm feeling a certain emotion, possible that I'll sort of revisit memories of a similar type in terms of that emotion. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so how would you compare yourself to an ESTJ? Um, for me personally, like, I could actually, I could have seen potentially ending up as an ESTJ. So I don't think that would have been too far apart. Joyce, what do you sort of, how do you sort of compare me compared to an ESTJ? Like, do you, do you see it? fairly similar or is it yeah good question so this this doesn't apply for everyone but this applies for some people and so i noticed like some of the differences between mark and an estj is that i noticed with istjs on a whole not everyone they the motions they tend to show on their face are either like this neutralist emotion like you're showing right now or frustration when something has been done suboptimally. <laughs> so I find those to be like the two emotions that ISTJs primarily vacillate between and also like sarcastic dry mode too. <laughs> Whereas with ESTJs, you'll notice with ESTJs on a whole, not everyone, they'll be a little more high energy, almost bubbly and almost like friendly and on a, and almost like happy, optimistic on a general emotional tone that you'll feel off of. So even like the general vibe off of an ESTJ is, is different than an ISTJ because it's more open. It's less private. You know, ESTJs feel a little bit more um, direct with their TE. So ESTJs will be more comfortable with kind of assigning roles for people to do proactively doing it. Whereas an ISTJ will do it if no one else does it. So it's like, all right, no one else is doing it. So you need a little bit permission to use your auxiliary function. With your second function, you need a push, a little like tap to, to start doing it. Whereas if it's your primary function, you're just doing it. Yeah. Yeah. Make so we can, yeah, those are a few differences. Another one is in tuneness with FI. <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 So an yeah. ISTJ will be more in tune with like who they are, what they stand for, uh, their likes or dislikes, what's important and not important to them. Mm. Yeah. yeah, that was, that's really, oh, sorry to interrupt, I'll let you go. Yeah, mm. keep going. Um, the, the one I've sort of found a little bit interesting was, is it Amy, ESTJ? Yeah. I think you might've done like a similar thing with her, like these mm -hmm. sort of interviews one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. Um, like, I think she was sort of saying like, she almost like copies other people's, like, um, not so much processes, but like likes and dislikes and things like that. Like for me, that's like, yeah, definitely not the case like at all. So um, yeah, totally relate to that comment for sure. <clears throat> yeah. ESTJs are a little more likely to have a hard time forming their likes and dislikes. So they just kind of copy their likes and dislikes yeah, yeah. from the people closest right. to them. It's yeah. like, oh, you like music? All right, I'll take on your like there. <laughs> Whereas an ISTJ is like, no, just make up your own FI. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's it. Be your own person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's a big difference too. Um, an ESTJ might be a little more open to new things too, constantly coming to them because their extroverted intuition is a little higher. So that's like one higher. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. 
Whereas an ISTJ will approach you with a little more skepticism if you bring something entirely new with no anchor to any past experience or past utility. Yeah, so that's another difference you'll see there too. <laughs> yeah. And so what is your relationship to FI, positive and negative? Yeah, as we sort of discussed, like if I immediately know whether I like or dislike something, um, it it feels very vulnerable, if I to me. Um, things that I like and dislike, if people were to sort of um, have a go at that sort of stuff, that would sort of really arc my back up a bit as well. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's pretty in my mind it's quite a vulnerable sort of function at least for me in that auxiliary oh sorry yeah is it auxiliary no mm -hmm. in that third slot yeah there's a lot there's a lot mm -hmm. yeah and so how does the negative fi manifest um i think i think the big one um that you hear about is that sifi group um yeah so i think that in my mind, like broadly speaking, I think that's being too, too in your head, not sort of interacting with the world. I think that for me can be on occasion like that negative thing. Um, but yeah. <clears throat> Interest, interesting. How does the SI, I mean, yeah, SIFI loop in manifest in you? How do you know you're in the loop? Uh, when I spend long periods of time without actually doing like too much planning or and not enough actually doing, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So over perfectionism. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Um, you can also maybe identify if someone is in an SIFI loop by how resistant they are to new things because they'll be avoiding the NE too if they're in a loop. Um, and so sometimes this will show up in, in a positive way and being very loyal and, and very dutiful and very like sworn to your word, integrity and having integrity. Mm -hmm. The negative way that, that, that NE can manifest if it's ignored too much is with some ISTJs uh, being patriotic to like a country or patriotic to like, I don't know, a sports team or like being very loyal to like, a specific thing <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. yeah okay yeah so those are or that could be positive too depending on what the loyalty is towards so that's some of the things i've noticed um hmm how about in the grip like how do you know when you're in the grip of your any any <laughs> your extroverted intuition um that's when you're like holding on to your, it's, it's when you're holding on to your repressed aspirational uh, fourth function, any. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, for mine, like, um, that's when I feel like there's too many options and like not enough certainty. There's not like there's too many variables. Like that's mm -hmm. when I know that there's, there's that. Yeah, when I feel like I can't pin down certain things. And there's like, yeah, too many options, too many variables. That's probably, in my mind, a bit of a telltale for that. Mm, makes sense. Yeah. And so how is it like to learn that not everyone knows how to utilize or even value TE, your parent function? Are you less frustrated by other people's incompetence now? Um, yeah, as I sort of touched on before, like, even without knowing about the functions, like, I, I think fully cognizant that different people had different strengths and weaknesses and personalities. So I was very much aware that my logic isn't always shared by others. That sort of A to B to C to D. Um, but yeah, um, I think, yeah, the big one, not so much from that, but just being mindful of other people and just identifying those different cognitive functions now has been a big help to me just to understand that perspective. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
So what does incompetence look like for you? Uh, like if you were to call someone like me or like incompetent, what would I have to meet the criteria of? <laughs> oh, like for a work from for, for a work setting, like if we're talking sure. purely work, like for me, yeah. um, incompetence is like not finishing things. Yeah. If you never ever finish anything. You know, yeah. Yeah. That, that to me is incompetent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did people ever build like an SI reputation if they keep not finishing things? It's like <laughs> yeah. and, then the TE, and the TE deliberately bypasses them too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's like you keep your promises. So when other people don't, it's noticeable. It's like, wow, yep. this person's flaky. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But because like ISTJs keep their promises and they're very consistent and loyal um, and steady, they make really good friends because they stay in touch with you when they are your friend or they're they're there for you sometimes. Mm -hmm. like, one of the yeah. only friends that, that keeps in contact with me on a regular basis is an ISTJ. And I'm like, wow, great friends. <laughs> <laughs> so did learning about MBTI type help you on your journey of self-discovery or was it more of a moment of affirming what you already knew of yourself or a mix of both? Yeah, I think it, I think it just solidified. Like I, I feel like generally speaking, I had a reasonable grasp of what I am and what I'm about. Um, but just um, having those sort of, you know, definitions and labels and things like that just sort of um, crystallized it. Um, particularly, I think, when like those examples are sort of given for functions being used, that, that was a really big help, just further understanding them. Um, but TE, I feel like I had a fairly good grasp of what that was about before even knowing what TE was, but things like SI, probably less so. Mm. Mm, yeah. We were talking about the inferior function extroverted intuition a while ago, and I, I thought of another way of putting it too. It's being quick to shoot down things things that are not realistic. So if yeah. you if someone's saying something and it sounds too airy fairy or too woo woo and it's like literally that that will not happen in reality. Like <laughs> there's yeah. no chance that will happen. Yeah. ISTJ will be one of the quickest people to kind of go like, uh, you know that that's not going to happen, right? So it, it can seem a little bit dream killery, but it's really like them noticing like this doesn't actually match up with reality because SI is storing impressions of reality that were relevant to you or relevant to what you find important. And so you know when certain things just will not work in reality. Like you need this sequence of things for it to work out, you know, A, B, and C, D need to be in place for that to work out. That's really not going to work out. So what I noticed about IS teachers is in my ISTJs in my life is that the qu quickest to kind of point out when, hey, that that's not realistic. I'm just letting you know that that's not going to play out mm -hmm. in reality the way that you think it's going to play out. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's one of the traits of inferior and E. Totally agree with that one. Yeah. Great example. <laughs> and so with, with which of the other types do you have the most commonalities with and which types are the hardest for you to understand? No, I think that's pretty similar for most people. Like generally it's easy to understand people with the similar types, you know what I mean? In a somewhat yeah. similar order. Like I how do you feel about that, Joyce? Do you tend to agree or Yeah, I would agree. Mm -hmm. Which types are hard to understand? Well probably the ones that don't have the same functions as you. <clears throat> Absolutely. Yeah. But it would be a question of like can you still relate to types that have your functions, but in opposite order? So like ENFPs? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Very much so. Like I can, I can definitely see it. It's just, yeah. My strength is their weakness and vice versa. Mm, makes sense. Yeah. How about with types that do not share your functions at all? I'm like ENFJ, would that be the ENFJ? <laughs> Completely opposite. I'm trying to think. <laughs> yeah. How do you relate yeah, to you? Right. Yeah. Because they they have all of your opposite functions and mm. in a different order too. Yeah. 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 Oh, I, I don't know. I suppose, yeah. It's just, yeah. Mm. Just, oh, yeah. You and I don't share functions, but 
we're still having a conversation, aren't we? So that is still true. Works, doesn't it? You know what I mean? Like yeah, <laughs> we, we must be tic tacking on something. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, typology mm. is the glue that brings us together. Mm. As a social introvert, how do you wish people interacted with you? Um, probably smaller functions, like smaller settings, smaller groups of people. And whenever I'm ready to do that, yeah. 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 So a little bit like how Joyce is saying, like ESTJs have got that sort of punchy, always on sort of attitude. That's probably less so for me. Yeah. Mm hmm. And so I'm wondering, what is your ideal work environment? Uh, for me, um, I really like team stuff as long as as long as people are like contributing. Um, don't mind that, but also like the I, I really don't mind having like um, a great deal of independence and just going about doing whatever I need to do and chime in where possible too. So um, either way. Generally, yeah, don't mind. But yeah, the big one for me with the team stuff is just, yeah, working with people that are um, sort of capable of doing whatever they've been tasked with doing. Yeah, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. You don't want to be with incompetent people who can't get things done. Mm hmm. What's the most annoying experience with a coworker you've ever had? You don't have to like name names, but what what things about them made them an unideal coworker? Uh, probably for me, it's like this is super easy. Like, so I think one of my old bosses is an ENTP, and he was just like everywhere, and he didn't do like he never ever finished anything. So that's like super easy in my mind. Like he had all these brilliant ideas, and ninety percent of them wouldn't work on planet Earth, but. Um, yeah, so it's super easy for me. Yeah, like um, uh, like I, I like working independently if possible, but I like to know what the boundary of where I'm working is. And someone like an ENTP, they never really gave that. So I wasn't sure whether he was covering things or I was doing them or we were both doing them or what. So um, that lack of structure and that lack of just that like, I suppose my pet peeve, like that lack of finishing things. Um, yeah, that was pretty difficult. Yeah. That's probably pretty difficult from his side too. <laughs> yeah. Like don't half-ass finishing things with an ISTJ. <laughs> mm. Mm. Yeah. So I'm wondering um, what are some things that uh, – I forgot my question. I'm having a day. That's, a, that's a good. Um, I've just got a coffee outside, so I'm just going to grab that quickly. Like, sure, so, yes. So you, so you think of your question. Perfect timing. That's good. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead and get that coffee. All right, guys. I'm going to uh, talk with y'all. Do you all have anything you would like to ask me? I am here. And oh, wait. Yep, he's back. <laughs> Yay. We're back. <laughs> what kind of functions do you want to better understand? Yeah. What functions are mystical to you that are enigma, that are out of this world? Um, for me, TI, I just, I still don't really, like I've read it, I just don't really get it. So I don't know, Joyce, even if you want to make me a little bit smarter and Try and take me through the mystical ways of TI. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's interesting. It, it's very similar to FI. So in Carl Jung, in his original text, he talks about how FI and TI are very similar. Everything he said about TI could apply for FI, but one is about thoughts, and the other is about feelings and values. Is Definitely. what the old Carl G said. <laughs> no, not Carl J. Carl Young. J. <laughs> Big CJ. He's all over it. He's read some good stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
and, and so TI is kind of like this intricate system of true or false and it's thought structures, like you're the frame, framework for your thoughts and seeing what makes sense, what doesn't make sense, figuring things out, problem solving, but with, with your internal ideas, thoughts, abstractions. Um, all introverted functions are abstractions, even SI, because it's abstractifying concrete experiences. Yeah. 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 And FI is abstractifying values in a certain way. And TI is abstractifying mm -hmm. thought structures and paradigms. And NI is abstractifying the abstracts. <laughs> cool. Yeah, cool. Yeah. And so I'm wondering, what's your relationship with guessing, Mark? If I told you, I don't know, to make a leap of faith or to guess at something, how often do you take a stab at things where you don't have proof or evidence? Or oh, proof? I don't mind, but I'll always, like, generally, if I'm talking to someone about it, I'll, like, I'll be the first one to flag, like, I'll say at the start, like, just taking a guess or not really sure of everything that's going on. Like, there will always be that little um, disclaimer at the start of it. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> That's a good way of putting it. And so, would you like a, to experience a simulation of TI for a day or so? Yeah, I think it'd be really interesting. Be Joyce for a day. Understand <laughs> Joyce a bit better. <laughs> it sucks. I have a miscommunication with FI users. So with my FI Dom friends, sometimes they want to feel special and significant. And the thing is, FI makes everything universal and a principle and a pattern. And so, I'll, like, I'll, I'll kind of explain. So I'll kind of go like, oh, that thing you did is such a FI thing. So I'm, I'm taking that one action they did, and then I'm taking the universal principle out of it. I'm like, this yeah. is the fact that you can obtain off of that. And then I make my FI friends feel so unspecial because they're like, great. I'm one of one billion. Thank you, Joyce. Yeah. And I'm like, no, it makes more sense because it makes logical sense. And so it means more. And so it sucks being TI. It, you say things and it gets misinterpreted. <laughs> and so would you be able to describe a step-by-step by what goes on when TE or more specifically SITE is engaged? Look. Yeah, if I'm given a task and I've sort of done something similar before, I'll already know, like just immediately already know what steps I want to take and who I'll, who I'll speak to and what I'll do and what I, yeah. I, and then it's just, in my mind, it's fairly sequential, just working through. Like I know that there's these 10 um, milestone steps along the way to doing whatever I need to do and this is what I'll do and I'll set out and go do it. Noise. Another way I've seen SI being put is you enter a new building and you know where the washroom is because you've seen buildings similar to it before in your past. And so you're like, yeah, this building's layout is similar to a past building I've been in. So I know the washroom is going to be probably around here. Mm. Yeah, because there's a huge compare and contrast element to SI going to past experiences to mm -hmm. then navigate the, the now. Yeah. 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 Good one. As you share the same functions, do you see any similarities between you and ENFPs? Yeah, totally. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, like from what I've seen, I can't think of too many like real life examples, but I've certainly seen a few of like Joyce's videos with the ENF ENFPs on there and seem like really good people. Mm, yeah. A big difference between ENFPs and ISTJs is that with an ENFP, they'll be making guesses willy-nilly everywhere. So they'll be mm -hmm. like, possibility here, possibility here, option here. Wow, ideas left and right, yeah. front and yeah. center. Um, so they'll be guessing like mad cow. Whereas with an ISTJ, they're very reserved with their guessing because they know what's unrealistic. So yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. A group of ISTJs brainstorming is probably not the best um set up for sure <laughs> and i guess huh, uh, some other things about enfps and istjs is enfps are good with starting ideas so enfps will like toss out an idea 
Um, whereas an ISTJ is likely, if, if they see value in it, to actually finish the idea. So if, if an ISTJ actually commits to an idea and they're going to, they're going to go through with it because their TE is higher stack, when you have mm -hmm. higher stack TE, you're more likely to finish tasks no matter how you feel about them. Um, and so there's that. And with ENFPs, their second slot is FI. So I wonder how that manifests in contrast to ISTJs. You guys actually might have more similarity within the middle of your stack. Yes, I agree, because they're, they're less heavily weighted as opposed to the SI and the NE. Totally agree. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. So your auxiliary function and your tertiary function are basically the same weight. They're mm -hmm. your functions that are in balance, whereas your first and your fourth function are yeah. your imbalance or your skewed, outer function, skewed functions. So an, an ENFP and ISTJ will have similar TE and FI functions. They'll have a similar manifestation over there out of all the functions that they have. That's going to be the most similar. Yeah, yeah. cool. Um, cause you toggle between your middle two functions. So you're like toggle, toggle. Um, what type is your closest friend? Uh, I think he might be an INTJ. Mm. Nice. Mm. What do you like about your best friend? Um, Like there's there's enough difference to be interesting. There's enough similarity to be. Um, I don't know what that that there's like there's a few similar similarities, but there's a few differences, and that's 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 a good thing in my mind for a start. Um, what else? Um, I don't know, like just like a lot of shared experience, like mm -hmm. similar backgrounds and upbringings, similar values, um, like genuinely, oh, sorry, I should say generally um, similar opinions, but like different different ways about doing things and getting there. So, yeah, I suppose, yeah, I, I like that there is some similarities, but I also like that there are some differences too. Mm, yeah. How many close friends do you have? Uh, I'd probably say like a dozen. A dozen. What makes it in your inner circle? What what qualities do they have? Um, yeah, good question. If I wanted to get close to an ISTJ, what things should I be aware of? What things should you be aware of? Um, like for me, I, I, I do value authenticity. So if I feel like someone's schmoozing me, that's pretty apparent pretty quickly. Um, what else do I value? Um, I know like similar hobbies, big one as well. Um, and then yeah, probably like values as well, like values, hobbies. Um, yeah, can't quite think of anything else to be fair. What do you think, Joyce? Like, what do you sort of look for in a friend? Yeah, what I look for in a friend is love. So it's like, do they are they open to kind of putting their whole heart into the relationship and kind of being vulnerable, emotionally honest, intimate, um, share the deepest part of themselves. So a quality of me is I get too deep too fast, like. I'll talk to someone and I'll go like, what are your greatest ambitions for your lifetime? What would make you feel fulfilled before you die? What helps yeah. you with your dead insideness? Um, yeah, I like to ask questions that are invasive and because I want to get to know a person beyond their job title, beyond their label, beyond all of the stuff that they show. I yeah. want to know their innermost core. And yeah. so someone who can entertain my questions about their mm -hmm. deeper nature. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so why, why, why do you think you need to know that info? Like, do you judge them based on their answer or is it to decide if they're going to be a good friend or not? 
So is you this, want to know their, their deep, dark secrets before you know them? Is this the, like a trial? <laughs> <laughs> it's to see if they can mentally stimulate me, actually. I'm very accepting of people's darkness. So it's more to see, can I hold an interesting conversation with this person? And what okay. I think is interesting is getting to know them in their abstract core, you know, their fears, yeah. their hopes, their aspirations, their desires, okay. their, fail, you know, failures, what makes them who they are. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's like the juicy stuff. Okay. Yeah. So do you think you're like, you're willing to reciprocate? I am. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm a bit of an open book because I want I want closeness and I want friends and I realize that if I want to have friends I have to actually share things about myself. So yeah, cool. in the necessity of reciprocity, like yeah, you understand there's a bit of give and take. Yeah, there's yeah. A bit come of give on. And yeah. <laughs> and so as an ice teacher growing up, did people tell you to stop being or stop doing something? Hmm. Not that I can think of, to be fair. Mm -hmm. How about, how, what did they call you when you were growing up? What were their comments that you got from people? Quiet. Um, what else? Um, hmm. I'm just trying to think. What else? Yeah, not really sure to be fair. Mm hmm Yeah. Makes sense. And so you mentioned in the previous video post processing and how it has helped you realize that you had SI over NI. Could you elaborate on that? Yeah, so um it's purely like and that probably feeds back into that memory side of things, like having that memory. I remember like a lot of details about past occurrences. So when um, like a new situation appears in, you know, in the present moment, it's immediately compared to, or it's tried to be compared to similar occurrences or same occurrences previously. That's probably as bad as succinct as I could say it, I think. Mm. Would you be able to tell that before getting into type that you did that? Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. very much so. Yeah. You're very popular. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All the introverted functions in general, they post-process, but in their own way. Mm -hmm. well, SI post-process by taking current information and comparing it to past mm -hmm. COVID information. Absolutely. Really like TI will post-process by comparing the current logic to its framework of logic. So mm -hmm. an FI will post-process by taking the current feelings and contrasting it with their own personal feeling, feeling values. And NI will po post-process by comparing the now to an abstract concept or main theme, main idea. So mm -hmm. yeah, introversion in general is just post-processing and extroverted functions or extroversion is in the momentness. So F E T E S E N E all have components of being in the moment, but in different ways. Yeah, which yeah, is cool. cool. What could be a worst case scenario in daily life for ISTJ? For example, most scary for N E inferior, most worrying for S E nemesis, or most annoying for N I demon. I think the most scary is like being put in a situation where nothing's familiar. Yeah. You know, so there's no base, there's no historical basis where you're just like purely trying to wing it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Have you ever had to deal with that in your life? Yeah, I think so. I think, I think more so when I'm younger, like the more years you have on this planet, like the more experiences I've now got to draw from. So it sort of becomes less frequent, but yeah. Hmm. Makes sense. Yeah. Hmm. It's interesting. So SI has a element of familiarity because it's because it's comparing everything to the past concrete that it's stored specifically. There's an element of familiar, like 
com like mm. anchor that can be more comfortable for them, even mm. if they might not admit to it. So sometimes with some S some SI users may not recognize that they recreate past experiences until you mm. point it out. Yeah. 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 Could so, be. Could be. Could be. Yeah. So I'm currently going over ISTP as a possibility for myself, but I'm not sure SE in the second position will work for me. How do you relate to SE, Mark? So Joyce, I'll probably need you just to like give us a bit of a debrief on the whole like fifth to eighth functions. So like that's my fifth function, yeah. SE would be, wouldn't it? Yes, it would be. Yes. Opposition. So, so um, yeah, like, could you just like run us through that sort of fifth, like just generally, as opposed to talking about SE, but just like that fifth function and sort of how that may manifest. I might be able to sort of relate that then. Yeah. So John BB would say that it's a part of your persona. So your first and your fifth function create your outward persona, which is pretty funny. Um, I have, I have like papers on it that I could pull up too. Um, but maybe as you explain your experience with SE, I can pull up the John BB notes and I can say it out loud as well. I think ultimately the most accurate understanding of the fifth function is if you would describe it without having known anything about it. Because the moment you know something about it, the moment is you might try to like stuff it into that box prematurely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I sort of thing. Yeah. So like it, so SE is like being very like sensory aware, isn't it? Like, um, so, I suppose, like, to give a bit of an example, like, for me, um, uh, like, I can startle quite easily. Um, that's one thing, like, and also, like, loud noises over a long period of time, like, just, like, too much sensory overload, like, that That sort of can be quite draining as well. Um, just something, what else, SE-related? But then like, I really like, I do like a lot of driving because like my work is quite a long distance away from my home and like driving is actually something I quite enjoy too. So yeah, I don't know. I'm sort of on the right track with it, Joyce, a little bit. I'm not sure. You are. Yeah. So I can read from John Beebe's book, how, how the fifth function manifests. So it's a part of your persona and your persona is how you are seen by others. You're defending yourself in some way with your SE function for the ISTJ. It has an oppositional quality with some edge of the same function in the opposite attitude. It's a bit obnoxious. People get annoyed with this form of it. Source of type bias and prejudice. Personal plays an important role in development. Oh, persona plays an important role in development. Must build up the persona to relate to others. Miserable to not have a persona. And so the, the SISE persona is called implementing. Um, so it's SI with a touch of oppositional SE. Mm. In, insisting on what we have to do. Something a certain way because this is how it is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, good one. So, yeah, it's like, I guess when it's when an ISTJ uses their SE, apparently <laughs> it has qualities of, of that. So, yeah. Yeah, there they go. Cool, cool. And so, ever had a relationship with INTJs? And how is your FE? <laughs> your, your closest friend is an INTJ. Oh, so, Alyssa, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, FE trickster. I really don't know like a whole heap about the fifth through to eighth sort of stuff. So I'm not sure how much I can sort of really elaborate on it to be fair. Cool. How does the FE show up in you and your friend? Is it like, do you guys FE? FE, like, I suppose like a great example, like of FE for you and I, Joyce, is like when we email each other, you've got like a million exclamation points and emojis and all this sort of stuff. Like to me, if I felt like, if I, if I type like that, I, I'd feel really quite fake doing it. It just sort of seems um, like very over the top happy. Um, so I don't know, like, do you think that's a reasonable example? Or? That is a reasonable example. Yeah. 
INTJs and ISTJs, when I email them, it's so formal. It's like I'm in a workplace with them and I'm their colleague and they're yeah. being very professional to me. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it, just, it just feels fake typing with emojis and all that other sort of stuff for me. That's all. Yeah. It's, um, <laughs> it's not trying to keep you two arm length away. It's just, yeah, it just doesn't feel genuine. Yeah, that could, like that. <clears throat> that could definitely be an FE trickster thing. I will say types that are even not not FE too will also use emojis and exclamation marks. So it's it's not just me. Okay. But yeah, yeah but, fair enough. But yeah, that is a good just a thought. Mm. It's a it's a great thought. And so, how is your day going? Yeah, pretty good. Um, I woke up like an hour before the thing kicked off. Um, had my coffee now. Good to go. Sunday, Sunday here in Australia. So, looking forward to a good Sunday. Mm, yeah, that's awesome. My day's going okay. The lights are off in my house, and so I've been trying to make do with life. He just, he just wanted to get into the Halloween spirit. I think. I think that's what you're telling everyone. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Um. I'm thinking about how's your day going? Like, how's it going really, Mark? <laughs> how's it going really? Yeah. Yeah, like, it's genuinely good. I just can't. <laughs> that's, that's amazing. Is, is, this, is this a bit of a, like a um, job interview to be your friend? You want, you want to know my deep, dark secrets? Yeah, yeah. And so we talked about emojis earlier. And so I noticed that there are trends between types and emojis, but this is by no mean, like for sure, uh, a thing that this is just, you'll see it more often. I noticed with like INFJs and ISFJs, they're most likely to use like this, the smiley face emoji with the dot dot bracket um, just yeah. a simple type of thing um it's most common with the ifjs for some reason okay. but also these are just behavioral cues type is not a behavior it is your cognition so ultimately take that all with a grain of salt it's the same thing as saying all asians eat rice it's true for some not true for all and so for your bubble tea addiction <laughs> I, <laughs> thank you now I can afford to indulge in my indulgence because of your wallets. Thank you. What well, MBTI is Joyce? I am an INFJ. Um, how often do you go over past things in your head and when? Several times per day, just thinking about what has happened this day and going through everything over and over again? Uh, it's not like at nine o'clock I will review things it just happens naturally it's just it's just there it's just on um what else is there and this and going through everything over and over again um i don't know if it's the case of going over and over again i feel like it gets like processed and then it's just sort of there to be drawn upon at a later date mm. maybe that's more of a group thing like that continual rumination over something that might be more of a group like an unhealthy sort of grip state. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I wonder if some ICE TJs aren't even aware that they go through the past because it's so everything. It's just part, it's just a huge part of who I am, yeah. Yeah. And so what's your favorite coffee, Mark? Hazelnut macchiato? Uh, for me, cappuccino. Yeah. <laughs> Joyce sounds Canadian the way she says about. Yes. You are Canadian, aren't you? <laughs> I am Canadian. Wow, that's some Sherlock Holmes you got going there. Okay. <laughs> how did you meet your INTJ and how did y'all become friends? Uh, junior sports. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think, yeah. Yeah. What sports do you play? Um, at the moment, playing volleyball. And I don't know if you have it over in Canada, but touch football, not quite the same as like NFL gridiron though, different. Um, yeah, 
quite yeah. a different sport compared. Mm. Mm -hmm. This is why a lot of ice teachers are private. I didn't know this about you until now. It's like you really actually have to ask targeted questions to get targeted info from an I was say, you've, you've never asked. Uh, yeah, yeah. Because uh, like you don't purposefully tell me without me asking is, is an interesting trait. Because some types actually purposefully tell you things like that, even when you don't ask. So, okay. Yeah. The more you know. What do you appreciate from INTJs? Uh, that intuition, I think. That NI. Yeah. Yeah. So sometimes it feels like INTJs are like, I might be playing 2D chess and they're playing 3D. They're sort of, yeah. How is your chess 2D? How's it 2D? Oh, I suppose all I'm trying to say is like they might be a level of complexity further ahead with whatever they're trying to do compared to what I can do or, or how I process or approach things. Yeah. Where does that complexity come from? Where? For INTJs? Yeah. In my mind, that's like that probably the NI. Interesting. Mm. So in reference to what you said earlier, do you only start what you think you'll finish? Do you ever change your mind midway? What do you do then? Abandon it? Suffer, th suffer through it? So it's about, do you only start what you think you'll finish? Yeah, so sort of that first bit, like, I'm very careful not to promise or say that I'll do something if I don't intend on doing it. So my word is my bond. So certainly, like, if I sort of opt in I'm in. Do you ever change your mind midway? Uh, yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, what do you do then? Abandon it, suffer through it. Um, yeah, it depends if it's like personal or professional. But more so, if it's professional, um, generally I'll see things through. Um, not unless I can sort of identify or sway others to show that the task or whatever may be given has less meaning or less importance compared to things that have sort of come to light. Um, but personally, yeah, um, things do sort of, as I suppose maybe it might be dependent on my FI, as my FI might change or whatever else, I'm quite happy to chop and change um, things that I'm working on personally. Nice. And so do you feel growing up, you got the support you needed to develop inferior NE or not? Why yes, why not? Is any nemesis still stressful and how? Any nemesis? Should that be NI nemesis? Hmm. Possibly NI, the last one. Um, you know, what you need to develop any... Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think, I think, um, I think I had a really good childhood. Um, yeah. I think also like just the nature of growing up, you know, like most things are fairly regimented and contained, you know, you go to school, you do that from whatever time in the morning to whatever time in the afternoon, there's rules, there's boundaries, all that sort of stuff. So it probably limited the amount of options, you know, or yeah, to a point hmm. is so is and probably is any nemesis still stressful and how so? That's probably should be NI, shouldn't it, Joyce? I am having a brain blank right now. I will search it up. I would think. Because any is. You know, this is a, you, you know, this is a panel with two introverts because we let it go completely silent for like five to 10 seconds. Yeah, and I don't know, know I'm super comfortable with that. <laughs> yeah, and none of us said anything. If this was an ESFP live Q&A panel, an ESFP would not let any dead space happen at all. <laughs> so it's like an extreme difference. Um, and so the third function is supposed to be the eternal child 
fun loving carefree mark and joyce how do you let loose and does it fit within your fur cognitive function it's called the relief function your or your hobby function or your 10 year old or your child mm -hmm. depending on where you look so you go to fi in in times of distressing okay I think yeah. that really creates a, a loyalty in ISTJs because they know what they value. So, you know, if FI is a relief function, FI is called valuing in some, some systems or resonating. And so it's kind of seeing how things strike you or if they're in alignment with who you are. And so your likes, your dislikes, and what's important to you and what's not important to you. Basically, mm -hmm. the element of prioritization that goes really well with uh, TE parent. When you have TE parent that can systematize and prioritize and find a structure of executing with things, when it's close to FI, it's like you know who you are and you kind of like set up systems to kind of live a life in, in accordance to kind of the who you are that you find you are. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, it can create so like a little bit like authenticity. Sorry to interrupt again. It's a bit, yeah. It can come across as a stubbornness too, because ISTJs can figure out who that is really quickly and then just set it and forget it. So it's like, that's who I am. So <laughs> I don't know. Sometimes um, I notice with some ISTJs when they're religious and they have that FI set of who they are, sometimes they can almost if they're like a type one enneagram two they can enforce it onto other people too because that's uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so it's like the way that that person's living their life is actually a little bit dumb in a certain way because it's not following the right values you know the yeah. fi values of good or bad yeah yeah so that's so what about good. you with your third function joyce <laughs> Um, for me, my third function with my introverted thinking, I can find a lot of fun in puzzling together things, especially when it's partnered with intuition. I love guessing and interpreting things in a deeper way. So it's like almost um, funneling things down to a main idea, main takeaway, main concept, the underlying meaning of something, um, and finding the framework which it can sit on. So. When I'm having fun with my TI, <laughs> it can look like intellectualizing things. So I, I can really like bring things into a mind game territory, trying to understand mm -hmm. it in a detached way. So it's almost like INFJs, like they're very warm on the outside. They have a very warm FE demeanor. But the closer you get to an INFJ's core, you actually get into NITI territory. And it, can, it can be kind of bird's eye view kind of zoomed out and kind of a little bit detached almost, but there FE feels a lot when it's with people. So when I'm with people, I feel the intensity of their emotions and all of the dynamics. But when I'm alone, I'm actually in introverted thinking. So okay. it's like actually a kind of detached space and it's yeah. fun. Um, it's, it's, I guess it's the side of me that likes brain teasers too. It's just how it shows up in me. I like games like Phoenix Wright and Professor Layton, and those are games anyone could like. Mm -hmm. But I like them maybe because they have brain teasers or brain puzzles that I like solving. So just figuring out that logic is, is interesting for me. <laughs> but yeah, how does your child function manifest? I spoke for you. I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, you did a great job. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't I'm not quite sure. As I said, like, it's just sort of, I know what I like and I know what I don't like. And I actively try and pursue things I like as best I can. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And with some ISTJ, their SI is seeing this is how the concrete, this is how the concrete world should be. And their FI is like, this is good or bad. And so you'll have someone who's like, sees how this is how things should be. And if you deviate out of this, it's like kind of good or bad and having like a good or bad valence attached to it almost. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Um, did you feel 
you had to lower yourself to other people's level in order to socialize with others growing up? That's an interesting question. Lower myself. Joyce, why do you reckon that does? Why would I lower myself? Did you ever have an elitist attitude to yourself? Oh, not at all. No, well, that's generally, that's probably one thing about me. Like I really abhor that sort of stuff. Um, sort of, yeah. So, um, so no, I don't, I don't think at all. I sort of lower myself. Like actually in my role, I sort of deal with all sorts of different people, both, you know, people that are university educated through to people that didn't finish, you know, certain, certain grade in high school and things like that. So no, it doesn't really worry me at all. That sort of stuff. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So, um, I think like one good trait that I certainly have with like dealing with people is just trying to like have or trying to identify things that we have in common and then sort of always having that to sort of fall back on when sort of discussing things with them. Cool. And so I'm an INFP and I run an arts business. I dislike any position of power over someone. I employ an ISTJ and let her run her immediate space her way. Would my inferior TE or polar SE annoy or please her? Would it annoy or please you? Hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's probably, I would suspect the big one would be just about clarifying how much freedom your employee has. So setting those, like those, the, the boundary of their, of their position and focus. Mm -hmm. Once that's done, let, it, let them go. If you're comfortable with that. Yeah. Cool. Um, have you ever yelled at someone for breaking the law? No. Mm -hmm. Have you ever broken the law? <laughs> You're like, yeah, no, this is not the place to do this. this, this yeah. Um, what, what do the Americans say? I played the fifth or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So not not all ISTJs are are like that. Um, maybe at the workplace, if they see someone maybe not following a protocol or procedure, and they can see that as being harmful. So it's like literally, if you don't do that, if you don't do the sequence of things this way. Uh, something bad will happen with the lower part of trying to finish it. Then they might tell you like, don't do it that way. But mm -hmm. not all of them are not all of them are rule followers like that. Um, what was an SI bias that you had to overwrite about other people when you got exposed to typology information? Um, I think I sort of touched upon it a little while ago, but that the whole memory thing. So like when you know. Um, sort of feeding back into like doing what I'm what I say I'm going to do and like people making a promise or stating that they're going to do something and then they forget because it was a certain period of time ago um, yeah that for me probably a decent example mm. Mm, makes sense makes sense and so Joyce do you ever have a life where INTJs are not brought up <laughs> I'm not sure what that's asking. I'll go back to it when I figure it out. Um, FE trickster in ITJ shows up as an unawareness of what's actually socially appropriate, which can lead to weird moments. Like, for example, not noticing when eye contact is too much. Got such moments. That almost sounds like autism. <laughs> that's, a, that's actually a trait of Asperger's like the inability mm -hmm. to know if you're giving too much eye contact or even looking away from people. So there you go. the more you know, it's just interesting. So. There you go. <laughs> yeah, I can't really relate with that one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so maybe that applies more for ISTJs on the spectrum rather than ISTJs in general or possibly. I could also not know that. Let me see. Which types do you generally feel most or least intimidated by? Intimidated. Hmm. I 
Yeah, I don't, don't really don't really think I can answer that. To be fair, like I'm sort of different types of people don't really intimidate me. So. Mm hmm. Mm. Yeah. What's the ideal day for you, Mark? Ideal day. Probably like it would have to involve like some form of being outdoors, like going for a hike or going for a fish on my boat or something along those lines, I think. Something sort of to do with nature to a point. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, makes sense. And so, what do you mostly do with your INTJ friends, colleagues? What's fun? fun? Uh, so, my, my, my good INTJ mate, um, we do like a lot of camping and things like that. So, that's one thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, that sort of, I suppose that touches on that ideal day question a little bit. That's sort of getting outdoors, nature that sort of stuff. Yeah, makes sense. And so Power Road Bull says, maybe hi, any users say things you don't even want to know. SI only tells when clearly needed. Maybe hi. Maybe hi, any says things you don't even want to know. I think that is true, yeah. There's also SI reminiscing. So sometimes SI will provide you irrelevant details to what you need to know, but sometimes it'll only tell you what you need to know too. Depends on the SI user. Um, TI, introverted thinking, is also known for telling you irrelevant details as well, because it's like, I need to give you all the logic so then you can form the framework for yourself too. Yeah, right. Not everyone yeah. needs that TI information. <laughs> sort of showing you the working, like for a maths equation almost, yeah. Do yep. this, do this, do this, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's the, it's the TE in ISTJs that tell you clearly what you need to know. So the TE is like, what are the bullet points? What are the necessary information? What are the executive summary that I have to tell you? Yeah, so I would say it's the TE that is clear with its speech. Um, that's my guess at least. Which types do you generally feel, oh wait. <laughs> I've done that one, yeah. <laughs> um, trying to find. Um, I'm so you know, Blue Jay. Um, and two. Do you prefer seeing the flames of a nice fire and feeling the wind moving through the leaves or rather sitting next to some water and being in the mountains? Um, I really like, um, I really like fires at night. Absolutely. But yeah, certainly, um, water and, um, yeah, hiking and things like that. That's really good too. So sort of both. Mm hmm. Hmm. Do our experiences better the more familiar they are? Um, uh, not always. No, sometimes like if like I do something and I really enjoy it, well, that's a really good thing too, even if it's the first time it's ever been done. Not <laughs> always. <clears throat> <laughs> makes sense, makes sense. Um. Hmm. Mark, what topics have been on your mind recently? We've run out of questions, and so now I'm just stalling until there's more questions. But yeah. Ooh, you know what we can play while we wait for questions? We're not really strangers. Okay, guys, I need to plug this. I am not paid by this company at all. But if you want an NF card game with deep questions, feel free to look at this game. We're not really strangers. Uh, if you want to have these deep conversations and subject everyone to agony, buy this game. So I'll go through one question. While y'all generate things to ask, um, do you think the image you have of yourself matches the image people see you as? I think overall, yeah. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's pretty congruent how people view you to how you actually are. I think so. How about yourself? Do you do you feel like do you Everyone, feel like who Joyce is 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 the is the same as who is what other people think Joyce is? Oh, hell to the na na. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel the same way. Yeah. I don't think people know who I am at all. Um, I think that people see me as someone who's very sweet and very, very nice and very, very kind, warm gentle thoughtful which i am i am these things but this is like a 0.01 percent of me but it is me um but that's like the only thing people know me for hmm. for me i i did i identify more with being piercing so i think that my role is to offer like piercing insight or piercing foresight um, into the red flags within people's lives. I feel like I, I notice those things and just that is what I offer. And also deep conversation. Um, mm -hmm. But oftentimes people can't sense that off of me. And so I don't appreciate that. But no. it's nice how people see me. It's just that it feels one dimensional. They see a one dimensional version of me rather than a free, three dimensional. Do you think that's because the FE is higher than the TI in your function stack? I think so, yeah. People don't mm. see my TI, they just see my FE. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and so you can feel boiled down to a lesser version of yourself almost, like, or boiled down to a more mm. simple version of you when it's really not the case. Um, okay. Would you describe... How how would you describe FI and SI interaction? My INFP S FI SI interaction is very nostalgic. Can you relate to this, or is your your experience of SI FI different? Yeah, similar. Yeah, it can be very nostalgic. Absolutely. Mm, cool. I've had um, ISTJs describe to me that their SI is sometimes not very sentimental too for some of them because. They're like, it takes a feeling function to make SI sentimental. And mm -hmm. so SI on its own is like the recalling of details and facts and impressions from what has been subjectively put into your mind um, as a concrete experience, past experience that stuck with you. Um, mm -hmm. But it doesn't necessarily have to come with an emotion for ISTJs. So it can, but it really doesn't have to. Um, yeah, cool. Whereas for INFPs, it, I guess more often when they use their SI, it's with FI too. So they feel that feeling associated with it. Um, well, hobby or pastime, do you have that kind of familiar, familiarizes yourself with inferior NE in a controlled manner? My ISFJ, my ISJ friend and coworkers like to do Sudoku. Hmm. Just trying to think. I can't think of anything specific. As I said, I think. The big thing for me with any has just been mindful of trying to be open to the new, the different and things of that nature. Mm. Interesting. Do you do any like pastime hobbies that are pretty chill? Um, pretty big reader. What books? Uh, a lot of self-development stuff at the moment. Cool. Yeah. Are you more of a fiction or a non-fiction person? Um, depends on my mood, I suppose. Yeah, it can be both. I suppose at the moment, definitely, it's more non-fiction. But I have read um, um, bits of fiction and things before, too. Cool. And so are you more or less likely to try something new, whether it's food, TV shows, et cetera, if a friend recommends it? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. It's probably better received from people that um, I value or I know particularly well. Sure. Mm -hmm. You ever rewatch TV shows? Rarely. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. A little bit, a little bit the same with books as well. Yeah. How about food? Do you ever eat the same food? 
Yeah. 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 Cool. Yeah, that's probably one. That's probably one that. Yeah, is a little bit more routine or a bit mm -hmm. more consistent. Yeah. Cool. Um, Joyce, is it possible that people see you like that also because you don't want to show them more, or they just don't see it? I think it's because. Um, with my extroverted feeling, I feel the need to put up a, a polite or agreeable front. Well, I forget that I don't show who I actually am. So it's almost like I know what not to say sometimes because I don't want to hurt people's feelings. And so sometimes that actually leaves out my honest opinion of things. And so it's a lot. It's it's yes and yes. <laughs> And so to both of you, night owl or early bird, do you like, love staying up or extremely late when you usually go to bed? Uh, for me, early bird. Um, so I think I sort of touched upon like, yeah, normally up at sort of 5 a.m. Mm. Um, so I go to bed sort of somewhere between like 9 and 10 o'clock at night. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool beans. For me, I am a night owl. I probably sleep around 2 to 3 a.m. every day. Yeah, legit. It's the curse of, of youth. <laughs> I'm looking for more questions. Oh. Do you find yourself concerned with the intentions of others or the implications of a comment they make? I'm myself concerned about the intention of others. I don't know if I'm concerned necessarily. I'm certainly mindful of other people's intentions. How about you, Joyce? Yeah. Well, I kind of see like how someone might say something that might offend other people. So it's like, a says something and I'm like, ooh, that, that opinion's gonna hurt X because I know X likes that. So mm. it's like being aware of the the how things are gonna land on people. Like, how common, good, yeah, how thing how words how the tone of something will land in another person's ears or like the contents of something. So I actually do notice um and the implications on how it's gonna affect like the group. So like if someone's being a good group member or not, so it's there's a bit of that too. But it's also on the long-term health of the relationship. So it's like, guys, you're gonna hate each other if you keep commenting like that. So don't do that. So it's like a that type of approach to it. Yeah, cool. Yeah. What are your thoughts on the nature of humanity, both of you? Cool, Mark. Take it away. <laughs> the nature of humanity. It's very N, isn't it? Do you ever think about as opposed to S. Do you ever think about that? Uh, occasionally. Certainly probably nowhere near as much as intuitives would. Mm. Yeah, it's, to be quite honest, it's not something I really ponder a mm. lot. Yeah. I feel like this would be something you'd be... This would be something that you would certainly sort of percolate on. Yeah. I'm never not thinking about the nature of humanity. I'm always thinking about it. And I'm always trying to relate every like I'm trying to relate things back to the nature of humanity. I'm like, so what does this thing say about the nature of humanity? And then it, it creates like this like existential angst within me as a person because I realize that um you know, the nature of humanity is this, but the way that we're living is another way. And so sometimes it causes a dissatisfaction within myself because I notice how the world could be and how people should treat each other or how systems ideally should be and how things aren't like that. And so it can create a lot of angst because there's this like rumination on the most ideal state of humanity and why the world is not there. Um, yeah. it's, it's also great topic to get to see the the lens in which people see life through um the nature of humanity everything is related back to the nature of humanity the 16 types is related back to the nature of humanity if you think about it 
Typology is a framework for finding balance. Every framework is a framework for finding balance, whether you're using the Enneagram or whatever self-development tool. It, it's a tool you're trying to use to find balance in your life because oftentimes we live life out of balance. And so whether you call this stuck energy or something in you that is compl complacent or compliant or complacency, right? It's all trying to describe the same thing, which is there is an imbalance in people's lives and it causes problems in people's lives. And oftentimes with humanity, we're, we're all trying to like kind of solve these imbalances, whether it is temporary band-aid solutions, like, I don't know, drinking or distracting yourself with your phone or doing things that are counterproductive or self-sabotage or you can also do those in a healthy way too. But I'm saying if you do these in excess, like if you do too much of this, then it becomes unhealthy. So sometimes we do things to ignore the inner uh, imbalance in our lives because sometimes it's harder to see solutions to things that don't always seem like they have solutions. And so oftentimes there are behaviors, like addictions are just solutions to problems. So addictions are a solution to another problem. So people become addicted to something because it's a solution to another problem they've had. And so oftentimes, I don't know, we all, maybe all human beings feel a certain type of angst or an imbalance or something like a hole or a void, even if they don't notice it, even if they don't know. Um, and it's kind of humanity's mission or maybe <laughs> us, here on earth, we're put to help each other through our imbalances. Hopefully, you know, maybe life could be more of a collaboration. I'm sorry, that was a little long. <laughs> no, it's good, very profound. And so what personality types do you find funny? Um, just quickly, Joyce, I probably need to wrap up in a, in a bit Absolutely. Or so if that's all good. Um, yes, I don't know, like, to be honest, I, I don't, my probably skill level with cognitive functions and types, I, I probably still struggle to peg people with type in, in a real life setting. So I'm just um, not quite sure, like, what sort of things sort of hit well with me. Um, probably, I, I'd imagine, like, that sort of, I, I think NE, would probably be yeah somewhere in the function stack would probably be be a big one i, I would imagine mm -hmm. cool i have yet to meet an istj conspiracy theory do you, conspiracy theorist do you agree and if so do you think the order and te gets in the way of such possibilities um yeah for the most part i agree with that yeah yeah yeah, yeah, I'd say it's reasonably unlikely for an ISG, ISTJ to be a conspiracy theorist. Be more of an ESTP. Thing. Interesting. Possibly, yeah. I think where where you'll find ISTJs who are conspiracy theorists are if they're loyal to someone who is a conspiracy theorist. So if they're like loyal to a religion that contains some conspiracy theories, you'll meet some ISTJs that are conspiracy theorists there. And if you meet an ISTJ that is loyal to a country, so not all of them, but some of them are like that. If there's a conspiracy theory within the, the fraction in which they're loyal to, they will also adopt conspiracy theories from there too. But yeah. most of them know probably. Yeah. And so thank you, Mark, for taking time out of your day to thank answer you. everyone. Always a pleasure, Joyce. Thanks for having me. <clears throat> it was really fun. I really enjoyed it. And you Everyone. always come with your coffee in my, in hand because it's like this is going to be a long one. <laughs> and so, yeah. I've got nowhere to hide either. It's just me. 
<laughs> today as well. Normally there's a panel. Yeah, the spotlight <laughs> is on you. Um, yeah, I find the introverts, especially like the ISTJs and the INTJs on my panel, will drink coffee because they're kind of low energy, and so they're like, okay, I need something to boost myself up or to like make me more awake during this. <laughs> so it's really cool. Yeah, good you, one. Yeah, um, you're super succinct. We should, yeah, we should um, catch up and have a look at that Enneagram stuff at some stage. Yeah. Too, Joyce. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Thank you everyone for asking rad and bomb questions and I'll see you Mark and everyone in the next episode. Thank you. Thanks guys. Catches.